Ah, rapid inflation. Or as autocorrect likes to put it for me, rapid inflammation. Which, I mean, I guess rapid inflation could cause... Let's talk about what encephalitis is. The brain tissue itself becomes inflamed in this condition. We actually look at the word encephalitis. Itis means... But apparently, according to the screen people, we aren't experiencing anything of that sort. There's going to be a lot of chatter today on Wall Street about whether we are in a recession. But if you look at our job market, consumer spending, business investment, we see signs of economic progress in the second quarter as well. The Fed Chairman Powell said, made it clear that he doesn't think the U.S. economy is currently in a recession. But you know differently when you look at your grocery receipts lately. <laughs> right now financially I mean other areas but specifically financially and it's times like these that we need to ask ourselves how did our grandparents and great-grandparents make ends meet and handle things before Amazon Prime and grocery pickups on demand I mean honestly think about it they went through world wars and rationing and the Great Depression I'm here to talk about some of the practices that are inspired by my great grandmother. Number one, I looked at where there were disposables in my life and tried to either completely cut that away or at least cut it down. I stopped using paper towels. Whenever I see a stack of dish towels on set, I buy them for cheap. You can even go to the thrift store and whenever they're available and buy a stack of dish towels. Does it create extra laundry? Yes. But you're already doing laundry every day, mama. Let's get real. So what is an extra couple towels going in with the rest of your towels that day? Speaking of towels, instead of disposable sponges, I use dolls. More towels. And honestly, I think this is more sanitary than using a sponge, which you're supposed to dispose of, I don't know, every week, but somehow you managed to make it last three months. Ow! Anyways, a little towel you can just throw in the wash every day. Next, I use glass containers instead of plastic baggies as much as possible. We still keep some plastic baggies around the house for things that are non-food items that might need to be separated, like crayons. But for the most part, we try to stick to our glass containers and just reuse those over and over instead of buying more plastic products. It doesn't seem like a lot, a huge cut in your budget, but it adds up over time. Anything is adding up because anything that was a dollar is now two dollars. Also, all that plastic is terrible for your endocrine system. Your kids might grow up to be a little confused about things. Excuse me, it's ma'am. If you get what I'm saying. This is not a politically correct show if you hadn't noticed. For a while now, I've switched to reusable period products. Instead of buying disposable, I have washable menstruation pads. Am I the only one who wonders why the word men is in the word menstruation? Yep, 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 yep. I also have this product. My great grandmother wouldn't have had it, but I bet you if she knew about it, she'd be jealous. That is a reusable medical silicone grade menstruation cup. And honestly, once I've gotten the hang of these products, I come to prefer them over disposables. I think they're more hygienic. They're less gross. You're not sitting in your own, you know. Ow! Yeah. Also, I'm not worried about getting uterine cancer from rayon in disposable pads. Am I also the only one who worries about a lot of our clothes being made out of rayon? Yep, 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 yep. Next, I started a garden. Now, if you're new to gardening like I was, I'm just gonna suggest you don't just try to grow everything all at once because more than likely 70% of it will die and you will feel very, very discouraged. Figure out what grows really good in your area, your zone for your season, and try to grow that instead. Also, don't worry about having a Pinterest-worthy garden. Ain't nobody got time for that. Get some cheap cinder blocks, or see if there's some free bricks on Craigslist, or even direct sow and plant your garden. You want to save money and not Spend money on landscaping, so keep that in mind. Think about the items that you spend a little bit more at the grocery store, like organic salad in a container. That's a little more expensive, but it's not terribly expensive or difficult to grow. Or strawberries. Figure out if your area does June bearing or ever bearing. Start with something small, and the next season you can bump it up a little bit and grow a little bit more. But getting started is what's important. I'm super pro meat for a portion of my life, have had to go on 
to the carnivore diet a few times to help with autoimmune issues, so I'm super pro meat. I think it's the most nutritious part of a meal. But if you're like me, you've noticed grass-fed beef is just not cheap no more. Not that it was ever cheap, but dude, it's super not not cheap. I even at Kroger's trying to purchase grass-fed beef have seen security chips on them. So people don't just walk out the door with the beef. So what I've done is in the areas where I would usually have meat three times a day, I instead have meat one time a day, and the rest of the times I supplement with my eggs. Not my eggs, that sounds terrifying. Eggs from chickens. <laughs> I have access to fresh eggs daily from my hen. And that brings me to my next point, is get hens. Once you get hens and you raise them and they're ready to lay, they can be really inexpensive to take care of depending on your setup. I've got a redneck setup where it's just a trampoline and some chicken wire around it and their little coop attached. We paid probably max $70 to put it all together with scrap wood and chicken wire and a free trampoline from Craigslist. The chickens don't know better. Plus you can actually move their coop around the yard so that they get fresh grass. Also, the chickens aren't terribly difficult to take care of. I feed and water them in the morning and I feed and water them in the evening and I clean out their pen. Not too bad. And I get fresh and expensive, very healthy eggs, even though they are not free range. I notice the quality is even better than the organic ones that I get from my grocery store, oddly enough. So yeah, eat eggs in place of your meat if you can. And if you raise your own chickens, if times get really tough, you know, you could always just... <laughs> if you aren't in an area where you can have chickens, you're in an apartment, you're in a subdivision, who will come after you and take your house away because you broke the HOA rules. Yeah, some of you guys signed those contracts. I always looked for that when I, when I moved to a new home. I don't like those. Anyways, if you are in that situation and you cannot have access to hens or cows or cattle, then partner with somebody you know who can. Offer to pay for the chicks and pay for the feed, occasionally help take care of the animals when that family has to go out of town, and then split the production with them. You can even partner with local small farmers and purchase a cow. And if a cow is too much for you, like you're a family of two or your family of really tiny little kids, get another family and go in together and purchase a cow and they can have half and you can have half. That way you still have access to affordable meat per pound, but at the same time, you are keeping local farmers trying to do things the right way in business. Next, I got involved in a co-op swap and trade. Grandma had community, and you should too. You can start by building this community or getting involved in a swap and trade community by putting one together in your local church or your local homeschooling group, or just finding a group on Facebook for your area. If somebody is getting rid of an item, for free or cheap that you need, check there first. Or even put a little word out, hey, I'm looking for this item, is somebody looking to clear it out of their house? You can find items anywhere from baby clothes, kitchenware, butcherware. <coughs> also a great opportunity to keep your house clear of things you don't need at the time while blessing others who could use it for that time. Next thing, if you can make it cheaper in the kitchen and you have the time, then make it. Great grandmother spent a lot of time in the kitchen and it wasn't because her overbearing husband chained her to the stove. Though the average public school education would have you believing that's what happened. Honestly, she was likely just in the kitchen all the time because somebody had to cook all those things so that the family survived. She didn't have always a store close to her with a wide variety of things like we have. That's why she had a garden and she had hens. Things that I have started making myself. Yogurt, got a pot going in the kitchen right now. Pray it doesn't mess up. Mayo from my chicken's eggs. Protein bars and vinegar. Vinegar, honestly, you can make like for free or cheaps. You just need like a little bit of apple cider vinegar with the mother and some leftover peels from an apple or an orange and you throw it in and let it ferment and voila, you've got vinegar. And you can use that instead of expensive, non-toxic essential oil cleansers to clean your house because vinegar is very, very cheap and very, very efficient in cleaning and sanitizing things. So many of these skills used to grace 
every American home and kitchen, but it's kind of a lost art now. Not only DIYing these products will save you money, it will also likely expand your lifespan. Because keep in mind, the longer your store-bought items shelf life is, the shorter yours will be. The next suggestion I have is try to not buy new clothes. First off, let's start by saying purchase clothes that are good fabric quality. And when I mean that, I'm not saying go buy silk, the most highest end cashmere. No, I'm talking about purchasing cotton versus really cheap stretch knits. Not only does this ensure that these items can hold up to wear and tear and can be passed from person to person, but they're going to be easier to mend. Mending clothes is a skill that we all should bring back. There are loads of tutorials free on YouTube. Honestly, you have no excuse unless, you know, you have no time, which is a lot of us. But if you do have time while you go and potty while you are making that yogurt, because yogurt takes way too much time to make, you can watch your YouTube video. Another thing I do that's not related to mending necessarily, if I am in a secondhand store and there's a clothing item that's not quite my oldest size, but she's going to be there in the next year or two, I will go ahead and buy it if it's a staple piece and it's in good condition, it's cheap, like a shoe or a jumper or a pair of pants, pajamas. If they're good condition, made of good fabric, I will just go ahead and purchase it then, put it in a tub for later. And that way, when she is grown, I'm not panicking to run to a store to buy something new and in that particular size because I already have it and I don't have to pay more for it because I already got it at a good deal. Save yourself some sanity and a little bit of money and don't be worried to buy ahead for your growing child. The next thing I'm going to suggest, and this is something that I've put into practice for a while now, and I'm gonna start this by saying we are a generation that is very used to outsourcing other tasks to professionals, which is great if you have the money, but if you're in a tight spot, it's time to take up a new hobby, and that is doing it yourself. For instance, you can learn to cut hair. I haven't had my hair cut professionally in how many years? I don't know, who knows? I cut my own hair, I think it's okay. Don't complain down in the comments. My hair is all right for a free haircut. Other things you can learn to do yourself. Simple car repairs, or not so simple car repairs. My husband replaced a head gasket quite the ambitious project, but it saved us thousands of dollars. Simple home repairs, like plumbing, electricity. Think about stuff that you outsource to other people that you could possibly learn yourself because y'all, once again, it is on YouTube for free. Somebody is on there chatting how to do your home repairs, how to do your car repairs, how to cut your hair. Your wallet will thank you. Your bangs might not thank you the first time you cut them. Just gonna put that out there, but eventually you'll get it down or just give up on having things. There's another really important note that I need to mention, and this is coming from a Christian perspective. I have to always keep in mind, regardless of the judgment on our nation, God is still in control. I have to daily take my needs to him in prayer. I was talking a while back to one of my pastor's wives I make that sound like my pastor is a polygamist. Let me clarify, my church has multiple pastors and so each of them have a wife. So one of the pastor's wives, I still feel like I'm saying it wrong. Anyways, I was having a conversation with her, how she was handling the fear of inflation and possibly the collapse of the food supply. And you know what she said to me? She's like, you know what? I had this conversation with my husband and we both agreed that if that happens, and we can't afford to make it, then we just die sooner. That might sound a little sad and depressing to some of you guys, but to me, that was actually very comforting. If it's God's will that we die sooner, then it is God's will, and we have run that race, and we will be with him in glory. But if it's not God's will, then he's gonna provide the means for us to make it. It's not always gonna be comfortable, it's not always gonna be glamorous, but if it's God's will, he is going to make a way. And so we need to recognize that and live in that peace. This may not be comforting for somebody who has a family member who has rejected God. For both me and my husband, we have believed on Jesus Christ. So we 
don't live in fear in that way. We have small children and we talk to them daily about the Bible and what Jesus did for them. And they're still not quite at the cognitive point where they may understand or maybe they're at the point where they can reject Christ. I pray every night over the girls that they will grow up to know God and glorify him. We just do the best we can with the responsibilities we are given and we leave the rest up to God. I love the quote from political figure I can't remember. The duty is ours, but the results are God's. And so we need to remember that, that the duty is ours and we do the best we can, but remember the results are God's. I hope this video has been valuable. If it was valuable to you and you made it this far, thanks. Would you mind considering hitting the like button? That could be cute.